I've written and spoken about gender in the arts an awful lot, having been on the, the inside as well as the outside and really feeling that we're, we're at a crunch point in terms of women in the professions. I'm not saying that it's getting better, but I think that women are asking more questions. I think that I think the presence of women in the workplace is always unfortunately accompanied by a great deal of expectation about what women are like and this expectation is always predicated on various stereotypes and I'm sad to say that I have and do witness casual sexism all the time because it's part of part of daily life. I mean, people think that if you say nothing, then it's neutral, but actually we live in a sexist culture, so I have seen behind the scenes of very, very high-level arts programs, publishing uh, ventures, anything you want to say. Whenever a woman guest is mentioned, she is judged according to a really sexist set of criteria. And of course, this is not overt. I'm not saying that people are walking around going, women, you know, they're stupid and boring. But there's a question about voice, there's a question about appearance, there's a subtle talking down and a belittlement of women and a sort of weeding out of women. So if you work in the arts and the media, what you'll notice is the laborization of women and what that means is women are overrepresented as executives, as administrators, as organizers, as producers. That's all behind the scenes stuff and often these are overworked, underpaid jobs and you have gazillions of massively competent women in these jobs and yet in front of the camera or on the panel or getting all of the main commissions you have no women or you have a token woman and I'm not saying that token women aren't absolutely excellent but don't tell me that there aren't 20 or 30 others so there's a very odd split between using women for their labor and then giving all the props and all the great commissions and all the opportunities away and it's not deliberate but it's so deep-seated that people do it automatically and when you call people on it when you say look you know I'm looking at um, your grid for the next six weeks of shows and if you think about a, a magazine format arts show six weeks of shows is six weeks of four or five items per show so it's a lot of slots covering art film design music literature everything and you say you have you have got 80 percent men being interviewed and 20% of women at the very most. And I mean, I'm saying this, 20% is too much already. And people get very defensive about it. There's a kind, of, I call it cultural femicide, which is erasing women from public life. And this is what goes on, and it's really frustrating. And unfortunately, if you are a lone woman and you complain, the lone woman is always scapegoated. And the reason why events like this are useful is that we're not lone women here. This is about solidarity. And when a body of women speak up, that's when real change happens. And uh, I was talking to someone about the idea of a feminist strike, the idea that we should just all stop at one point for just two days and we should do no labor whatsoever. I mean, the world would crumble. Nothing, I mean, you know, you turn on the TV and it would just be like a flat black line. Nothing would happen because women wouldn't, wouldn't be putting their all into keeping the system going. So I'm very concerned, but also very hopeful, given how much activism there is. And it's not just grassroots activism, it's activism and questioning at all levels of society. Um, so cautiously optimistic, I'll say. I, I think the way forward is not just for us to talk amongst ourselves, because I feel that women we do talk amongst ourselves. We are constantly bringing these issues up. And in fact, whenever I'm, I make a new female friend, within 20 minutes, the issue is always politicized. It's not about you and me talking about where we live and whether we like our families. It's always something to do with women in society. But I think that you then have to confront the perpetrators. And that's the thing that, that anyone would naturally shy away from. Because of course, perpetrators want to conserve power. So if you go up to the Today program and say, why do you only have 17% of women? They give you victim-blaming excuses. 
But if 200 women go up to the Today programme and say, what the hell do you think you're doing? Then their position begins to look a lot more tenuous because it's very easy to argue against them. It's very easy to disprove their arguments. And what needs to happen is a real attacking of the people who are perpetrating it. Because what always happens in crimes against women, and cultural femicide is a crime against wom women, womankind. What happens is perpetrators victim blame and perpetrators close ranks. And what you have to do is turn to the perpetrators themselves. And here I'm talking about editors, commissioners, steering committees, producers, you know, all those people in power, the suits, and debunk their arguments. And you have to do it publicly. I think this is the other thing, is that, I mean, millions of women have complained privately in, in human history, and it makes no difference. You're either rebuffed or ignored or insulted or scapegoated or sort of psychologically sent to Coventry. What's happening now is women in the media, women writers, Journalists like me who do a bit of activism at the same time are turning around and making links. So as ever, you know, we've been saying this for something like 40 years, the answer is female solidarity. But I would add that it has to be public, it has to be loud, it has to be all the things that women are said not to be. You know, we're supposed to basically look nice, not take up space and keep our voices quiet and not be shrill. You know, if you speak up, all these insults are thrown at you and they're very gendered. So you're shrill, you're strident, you're this, that and the other. We have to be all of those things. And I don't know if change will happen, but social change has happened. Look at what women's lives were like in the, in the 1950s. That wasn't so long ago. So change does happen. It feels like it happens slowly when you're in the middle of it. But that's not the case. And I think that as hard and horrible as it is to confront perpetrators over anything, it's what you have to do. It's that classic thing of speaking truth to power, which is so powerful in itself.